Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is still doing well and welcome to, depending on wherever you may live, this middle of the night or early morning bonus upload. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost a cent. Click that like button. Takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, folks, they genuinely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into this middle of the night or early morning bonus upload, shall we? This early morning or middle of the night bonus upload fits in with tomorrow's main upload. Um, I have been looking into kind of these cases for a long time. Uh, these government cover-ups, these tragedies that families endure and the government just makes a mockery of it. One, by slanderizing the people. Two, by covering it up. Let's get into it. So guys, like I said, I've covered this case pretty much since April 2nd of 2021. And I have, I have a file of at least 100 pages. <clears throat> Information that I've dug up and people that I've talked to people that have reached out to me and gave me info and there are no answers. There are no answers. The more the Cott County Tennessee Sheriff's Office public relations puts out in the news, the more questions are raised. If you ask me, I want to start out with the cases or the, the attacks which I 100% believe are dog man. You will as well after I describe to you what these attacks were if you are not familiar with them. Saturday, April 17th, 2021. Cock County authorities released preliminary details regarding a body found on April 1st near the intersection of Jimtown Road and Carnation Way on April 1st. Charles Owensby of Carnation Way told Deputy Sergeant Heath Willis he found a male body near his mailbox at 12.40 a.m. Sergeant Willis said the body has been identified as Tony Allen Ahrens, 52, Loves Park, Illinois. The body appeared to be partially devoured by an animal. The chief, Cott County Deputy C.J. Ball, said the autopsy is being conducted to determine the cause of death as well as to determine what type of animal is involved. Newport Patrol Officer Jesse Burgess recognized the victim as Aaron's, and investigators say they located an individual who had talked to the victim at 9.30 prior to the body being found. Guys, I'm going to stay with each person until I share enough info about each case. I will jump to Amber Miller right after. August 3rd, 2021, Newport, Tennessee. Tony Ahrens died from multiple animal-induced injuries, according to an autopsy report from Knox County Regional Forensic Center. The report was released by Cott County government on Tuesday. The autopsy could not determine whether this attack was from multiple animals, nor what type of animal did it. No other types of injuries were determined from the autopsy. 
Police say Aaron's 52 was found unresponsive in his neighbor's yard by the homeowner near Jimtown Road on April 1st. First responders took him to Newport Medical Center, where he was pronounced dead. An investigation revealed scattered clothing, claw marks, and blood on the ground consistent with an animal attack. The toxicology report states that amphetamine and methamphetamine were found in Aaron's bloodstream. Cock County Sheriff Armando Fuentes previously stated that the use of methamphetamine was believed to be a contributing factor. July 22, 2021. Details on alleged animal attacks that have occurred on Jimtown Road in Newport are still limited just days after a second of two victims have died due to her injuries. Chief Deputy C.J. Ball released a statement saying that both cases are still under investigation and more information would be released once it is obtained. He urges members of the public to be cautious when traveling in that area. Anyone that is traveling on Jimtown Road should use caution until the investigation concludes with all of the facts and we can gain further information about what happened during these incidents, Ball states. We cannot release any other information at this time due to case credibility. Interviews are being performed and search warrants are being served as of Wednesday morning. The office has released, released the two incident reports from the alleged attacks which occurred on April 1st and July 12th. The initial attack, April 1st, led to the death of 52 Tony Aarons. The report states deputies were dispatched to the area where Jimtown Road, of Jimtown Road, excuse me, and Carnation Way on a report of an unresponsive man lying on the side of the roadway. Sergeant Heath Willis arrived on the scene to find Aarons unresponsive. Willis' report states that Aaron's clothes were torn and bloody. He noted lacerations across his entire body. EMS workers and City of Newport police officers arrived on the scene, one of which identified Aaron's. The investigation revealed that Aaron's had exchanged text messages with a co-worker just hours before his death. August 3rd, 2021. Knoxville, Tennessee. An animal attack caused the death of 52-year-old Tony Aarons, according to an autopsy report from Knox County Regional Forensic. According to the report, Aarons died of multiple animal-induced injuries. Aarons' death was ruled an accident. The medical examiner determines the body of Tony Aarons was found near his property on April 1st after he was found unresponsive and suffering from multiple injuries. The autopsy revealed Aaron's had multiple animal-induced injuries, including punctures, lacerations, contusions, torn veins, and the loss of his left arm. Whether this was one animal or more than one animal, and what type of animal is unknown, the autopsy read. The autopsy disclosed claw marks and blood were found on the ground near Aaron's body. The report revealed Aaron's tested positive for methamphetamine. According to the medical examiner, blood levels of 200 to 600 NG milliliters of methamphetamine are typically reported in those who abuse the drug and exhibit violent and irrational behavior. Test results showed 1,000 NG ml of methamphetamine in Aaron's system at the time of death. Aaron's was the first of two people to die along Jimtown Road in Cock County prompting authorities to warn travelers to use caution in the area as the investigation continued. Now we will jump into the case of Amber Miller. The second attack on July 12th involved 29-year-old Amber Miller of Newport. Report shows that Deputy Rebecca Colley was dispatched to an emergency room of Newport Medical Center in reference to a dog bite. She made contact with an unidentified individual who stated they had found Miller lying on the property off of Jimtown Road. The individual reported that Miller appeared to have been attacked by dogs. He told Kali he observed three dogs standing around Miller, licking the wounds where he had been attacked. Coley's report says that Miller had several 
severe lacerations on her leg, torso, neck, arms, feet, which led to significant blood loss. Miller was immediately airlifted to the University of Tennessee Medical Center for treatment. She died days after the incident. The second victim, 29-year-old Amber Miller, was attacked on July 12th, according to a report. Officials were told by witness that Amber Miller was found at 522 Jimtown Road asking for help. Three dogs were spotted around Miller licking wounds where she had been attacked, the report states. Witnesses were able to take Miller to the hospital, where medical staff described her injuries as severe, noting her calf was ripped off and her arms were barely attached to her body, the report states. I'm going to go back to Tony Aarons really quick because as I was flipping through my paperwork, I do have Aarons' autopsy details. Dr. Christopher Lockmuller of the Forensic Center cites multiple animal-induced injuries as a reason for Aaron's death. He was found lying the night of April 1st on his right side with obvious soft tissue injuries. At least one animal also had torn his clothing. His injuries included a ruptured vein in his left arm and another partially ruptured vein in the same arm. He also had numerous abrasions on his torso, neck, and head, and some puncture wounds on his head and neck, according to the report. Whether this is one animal or more than one animal, and what type of animal is unknown, Lockmuller report states. The wounds appeared to have been inflicted before Aaron's died, according to the report. Methamphetamine was found in Aaron's system, according to the report. February 11th, 2022. The Knox County Regional Forensic Center has confirmed a Cock County woman found dead in July died of complications of multiple organ system failure following a vicious dog attack. Amber Miller, 29, told investigators at the hospital she fell into a bush on July 18th, 2021. The autopsy narrative obtained on and by News 10 this week showed a different story. Witnesses told authorities three dogs attacked Miller in the front yard of 522 Carnation Way in Newport Cock County Sheriff's Office. Detective Daniel Smith said they appeared to be a Mastiff, a Cane Corso, and a Shepherd Pit Bull mix. Miller's left upper extremity was amputated and approximately 42% of her skin was gone. The autopsy obtained by WBIR states the manner of death is an accident. Toxicology report shows Miller tested positive for multiple drug, including amphetamine, methamphetamine, and fentanyl at the time of her death. Still, the medical examiner ruled the extensive injuries from the animal attack are what ultimately led to her death. Amber was found in the same location where 52-year-old Tony Arantz was found mauled and bitten back in April of 2021. Autopsy for Aaron's revealed investigators found scattered clothing, claw marks on the soft dirt, scattered blood on the ground near the scene of the attack, all of which are consistent with an animal attack. This is where things get weird. All right, It's weird already, and I'm sure you guys are piecing together the puzzle pieces that I'm Hinting around that. The Cock County Sheriff's Office reported it was investigating the July 12th case and similar incident from four months earlier along the same road in Cock County. Jimtown Road is just outside of Newport. A similar incident occurred on the same road in April 1st of 2021 that resulted in the death of Tony Aarons. The Cock County Sheriff's Office wrote in a Facebook post, Reese, who was friends with Amber, said Miller suffered countless bites on July 12th and went under sur several surgeries. They were not minor bites. She got sepsis. Her arm was taken off. We figured she may lose an arm, but not her life. The next day, her life had been taken. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation confirmed it was helping with the latest investigation. Knox County Regional Forensic confirmed 
it was preparing to perform an autopsy on a woman named Amber Miller. University of Tennessee Medical Center confirmed the woman named Amber Miller was admitted on July 12th and passed away on July 18th. In another social media post, the Cott County Sheriff's Office wrote the names and specific details are not being released to protect the investigations. Authorities also warned against spreading unconfirmed information on social media. All right, so the most recent report was a report that I read just a few seconds or minutes ago from February 11th of 2022, where it said Amber Miller, 29, told investigators at the hospital she fell into a bush on July 18th, 2021. The autopsy and narrative obtained by News Center 10 this week showed a different story. She was dead. She had passed away on July 18th. Put it this way, when <clears throat> the Good Samaritan found her propped up against a tree, there was three dogs licking her. Some say she was screaming, some reports, for help. I think she was asking for help, like the man stated, but not screaming. The woman was immediately airlifted to the or Tennessee um, University Medical Center with the extensive wounds and surgery she went through she was probably put into a medically induced coma so she wasn't speaking July 18 okay once again right here is media lie media lies also If these three dogs <clears throat> that were licking Amber Miller's wounds were the aggressors or the, the um, culprits of these attacks, how was the Good Samaritan able to walk into the area, get Amber Miller, I don't know how he was able to put her in his vehicle because pretty much her arm was ripped off. It was just a, a, a very, very grotesque attack. But if they were the aggressors, these dogs, they would have attacked him. Dogs lick victims. These dogs were not aggressive. My guess is they... The attack happened. The dog man, which I do 100% believe was the perpetrator, left. These dogs came and did what dogs do. Try to be compassionate while licking her wounds. Dogs are very intelligent. I do believe that they are aware that their tongue has some sort of antiseptic kind of property to it. Um, but, I mean, if these were the perpetrators, they would have been ripping at her when the Good Samaritan rolled up on it. All right. So we got a whole bunch of lies. The only truth is, is the victims where they were found and the amount of damage done to both bodies. Now, another thing that is very disturbing and very strange is how they try to, I guess, make the victims look like the bad guys. When did that become a thing? Thank you, media, for being like the best. Um, <laughs> they pretty much said, well, actually it was Armando Fuentes, the sheriff there, who wears a pink tutu, by the way. Um, they pretty much said that it was Tony Aarons' fault. He was attacked because he was a meth 
he used methamphetamines. I don't know if he was a meth addict, and I'm not going to say it, but he was obviously using methamphetamines. So was it Amber Miller. So apparently, these dogs are attracted to people who use methamphetamines and attack them. Or Dogman is attracted to people who use methamphetamines and attack them. It must want their blood to, you know, maybe it uh, gets high off the blood. Who knows? Very stupid. Very, very stupid on the Cot County Sheriff's Public Relations Department to quote our friend Armando Pink Tutu Fuentes. And this is how bad the media and Cot County Public Relations, Sheriff's Public Relations, decided to paint the picture of the victims. Since when were the victims on trial? I mean, literally not on trial, but figure of speech. Why in the world would you try to humiliate the victim's family or the memory of the victim? Tony Ahrens was reported homeless, living under the 19th century railway bridge near the scene of his death, though he was locally employed. Amber Miller was reportedly raised by her grandparents after her father, Robert Scott Miller, 26, a five-year Cock County deputy sheriff, was on October 11th of 94 shot dead while helping the FBI apprehend two fugitives. Both Amber Miller and her mother, Cindy Miller, struggled later with substance abuse and were occasionally arrested. Amber Miller, charged in 2018, most seriously, Amber Miller was charged with three counts each of child abuse and neglect after calling to tell Cot County Sheriff's Office the first one of her children and then another had stopped breathing and that she was having breathing troubles herself. The Morristown Citizen Tribune reported Miller told officers she was taking Suboxone and also breastfeeding. She failed a subsequent test for amph amphetamines and methamphetamines, bufomorphin and MDMA, which is ecstasy. Subsequent to that, though, both Amber and Cindy Miller appeared to have turned their lives around. Cindy Miller, someone needs to be held accountable. I was there when she was made as she grew up and held her while, her while she died in my arms. Just as she was born, Cindy Miller told animals 24-7, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and I am broken, heart, mind, soul. I have not even received a courtesy call regarding Amber's, well, let's call how I see it, murder. Scott, her dad, gave his life in defense for our country's county citizens, Cindy Miller states. We used to be a part of the justice community, not any longer. I gave 10 years of my life working for the county ambulance service, three years at 911. I also coach sports in the community every season, dedicated to give what Amber needed. My baby girl is gone and I had to watch her die in a slow, agonizing death. Please help me, Cindy Miller asked. To demand action, someone needs to be held accountable. I agree. Someone does need to be held accountable. I don't agree with the media just slanderizing these poor victims. It's disgusting. I don't know how Cindy Miller even... After the media made these comments about her, was able to even talk to the media. I wouldn't have. It's disgusting. It's it's reprehensible. Unbelievably just. I guess if that's good journalism, 
I never want to be a journalist because I guess I have a heart. These people don't, nor a brain. Um, so then, <clears throat> then our friend, Sheriff Armando Pink Tutu Fuentes and uh, Deputy Doolittle C.J. Ball decide to look into the case. And who do they go to first? The man who called 911 for the original victim, Tony Ahrens. They go after Charles Owensby. Why? Well, Owensby wasn't a good guy, but Owensby made the call to 911. So, and, and, it, and it's even weirder with this. This is, you thought that was weird? It gets even weirder. But during this whole time, I did have a subscriber contact me, and he rode his motorcycle down Jimtown Road, Carnation Way. And he met a homeless guy down in that area, down under the 19th bridge there. Um, 19th century bridge, where the train trestles were. There's a homeless camp there. He talks to the guy, and I had him on. I interviewed him. Um, the interview was decent. The guy did speak of dogmen. And... As the subscriber was leaving, actually, there was questions asked. Why do you want to be here? I don't have any other place to go. I've been here, you know, like. So as he's leaving, he gets on his motorcycle and he goes, the homeless man looks at our subscriber and he says, listen, be careful riding out of here. These things will come out of the woods. And they'll just jump on you and take you into those woods. Even on your motorcycle. In a flash. And the, word for word, pretty much. Unbelievable, right? I mean, <laughs> it's like, you know, the Cott County Sheriff Department. I mean, I, I really think, like, there's got to be a better way of providing shelter for homeless people. Um, I know in my neck of the woods, there was a homeless camp out in the behind a park and the community actually worked together to get a building that was abandoned, but actually in decent shape and the local and county police asked didn't ask told get out of the woods it's not safe you're not safe out here let's move they could have done something like that i mean yes money is a factor but in my eyes money is not better than a human life at all whether you're homeless or not i mean just because they're homeless doesn't mean they, they have rights, they have feelings, they have, you know, it's, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. And, and these people that make these calls, like the media and the, the local, county, state, federal, technically, I mean, they're only one step away from being there themselves. Something bad could really happen. I mean, you've seen it to very wealthy people. So anyway, subscriber was told, be careful. These things will come and rip you off your bike and take you into the woods. So moving on to Charles Owensby, the man who made the original call. On July 19th, the Cott County Sheriff's Office served a search warrant on Owens prop Owens B's property at 522 Carnation Way. On July 28th, they went to Owens B's ex-wife, Cecilia McCarter's home in Edwina, 
community and served another search warrant. An aggressive dog was taken into custody and Owensby was charged with marijuana possession. Investigators gathered DNA evidence from two other dogs on the property that belonged to other people who lived in the resident on the property, according to Cott County. Cott County, Tennessee. Officers with Cott County Sheriff's Department used SWAT officers to execute a search warrant on Charles Owensby, 69, Wednesday morning, according to officers with Cott County Sheriff's Department. Owensby is listed as the original complainant on a Cott County Sheriff's Office incident report after the body of Tony Aarons was found near his property on Jimtown Road, April 1st. Um, officers also said an aggressive dog was taken into custody. DNA was collected from two other dogs that were not Owensby, but resided on the property. They didn't reside on his property. They resided on his wife's property, which was miles away. Officers also located a shallow grave at the property containing a deceased dog, which they collected more DNA from. (laughs) A day later, a day later, they're going to dig up a dog that has been decomposing and say, hmm, it's decomposing. Let's take some DNA from this one. Really? Holy cow. There maybe maybe there should be a test for police officers. Maybe they should have an IQ higher than one. Anyway, moving on. Um, and that's not all police officers, because I know a lot of people, I know a lot of police officers, and they are bang up guys, just re- and women, men and women, just real good people. But whatever whoever these stooges are, it is amazing to me. Uh, according to Cott County Sheriff's Office, Charles Owensby was arrested on drug charges and remains in custody. The Sheriff's Office confirmed to WVLT that Owensby's arrest was not connected with the animal attacks. <clears throat> this news headline is saying person of interest arrested with the two attacks. He's not, though. He's not, like, for gosh sakes. Here we go. Keep going. I'm sorry. The report described Aaron's as having lacerations on his entire body, flesh missing on his left arm. An autopsy was performed to determine what type of animal may have been responsible. Second victim, 29-year-old Amber Miller, was attacked in the same area on July 12th, according to the report. Officials were told by witnesses that Miller was found on 522 Jimtown Road asking for help. Three dogs were spotted around Miller, licking the wounds where she had been attacked. Over the years, Owensby has accumulated several charges ranging from aggressive, aggravated domestic assault to aggravated assault with a weapon, but most of them had been dismissed. One aggravated domestic assault charge is pending from a 2018 case. So, Charles Owensby is not a good guy. He's not. But, he did call 911 to report Tony Aarons was found dead here. They just keep going crazier on this guy. According to a 2014 report from Newport Police Department, Owensby allegedly hit Charles Oden in the face with a gun. Reports stated Owensby allegedly told his dog to attack Olden. Olden tried to run, and Owensby tried to run him over with his car. Newport police said Owensby also served time for a felony conviction of stolen property. Cott County officials confirmed that they identified a person of interest in the investigation into two separate animal attacks on Jimtown Road. This isn't a laughing matter, but I don't know. I'm laughing at the stupidity of the media and of the police department and how they're handling this. It's so unprofessional. It's, and these are the people that the good people of Cott County depend on to keep them safe. (laughs) 
Oh my God. Check this out. At this time, we don't have any evidence that indicates that there is a wild animal, domestic animal, or pack of animal that is frequenting the Jimtown area attacking people, officer said. However, we are asking people to be cautious in the area as we wait for forensic reports. That'll take a month or so. You've got two dead bodies that are torn up beyond belief, man. But there's no evidence. Okay, okay there, fella. So now, pretty much what happened during this case is they, instead of, instead of really looking into or sending that SWAT team out into the woods to put down what I know and I'm hoping you guys know killed Amber Miller and Tony Aarons. They used their resources to media and police smear Owensby. The guy is the guy is a dirtbag. All right. He he's not a citizen of good standing. But he was the one that called 911. He got busted with a little bit of weed. And, you know, I know I, I had a subscriber email me. Weed's still illegal in Tennessee. And I'm like, okay, I understand that. But you, the newspaper and the mainstream name media are just, just they, they pretty much lynched this man. They've judged jury and executioner on Charles Owensby because he had some weed and he had a record. So it gets real weird. Owensby is the only guy that's a person of interest. But I'm thinking after... I, after I share this, I'll, I'll share what I'm going to say now, and then I'm going to share with you why I feel. Owensby knew what was going on out there. I think Owensby knew there was a dog man or dog men out there. Because on Owensby's rep- uh, Facebook page that is no longer in existence, his name was Charles Dogman Owensby. Dog man, not dog man. Dog man. One word. I really think Owensby knew. And I think the the local, county, state, federal government were really scared about him opening his mouth. Because then this happens to him. Charles Owensby, the man who reported finding a body on his Cot County property after a possible animal attack, possible, was arrested at his home Wednesday for failing to appear in court on Monday. Owensby was originally arrested on drug charges in July. At the same time, authorities took an aggressive dog into custody and collected DNA from two other dogs that were not Owensby's but lived on the property. He was originally released on July after posting a $1,000 bond. On Monday, Owensby reported that someone shot a bullet through his trailer around 2.30 in the morning A deputy was dispatched and did see a bullet hole in the camper facing Jimtown Road, but did not see any shell casings in the yard or the roadway, according to investigators. He also said that the county road employee had been screaming murderer at him in the mornings. The deputy advised the captain of the claimed incident that he agreed to get in contact with Owensby. During this time, Owensby was allegedly very upset and said he would retaliate if they killed his dog. The criminal investigation division found that the alleged bullet holes were already there from a previous incident. Owensby was charged with filing a false report. Owensby is listed as the original complainant after the body of Tony Aarons was found near his property. Authorities have been investigating Aarons' death as long as well as the death of Amber Miller months later. And this is the most recent news that we have. 
Charles Owensby is back in jail after he allegedly filed a false report with Cock County Sheriff's Office. Reports show that deputies responded to 522 Carnation Way at 9:10 Monday morning. On September 20th, Owensby told deputies that someone shot through his camper at 2:30 in the morning. The report states that deputies found what appeared to be a bullet hole that went through the camper on the left side that faces Jimtown Road. Owensby went on to say that a white 2010 to 2016 model Chevy pickup truck was driven down the road when he heard the shot. Deputies could not find a round as it did not lodge into the camper. During the course of investigation, the CCSO, Criminal Investigation Division, found that the alleged bullet holes were already based on a prior inspection of the camera or camper. Owensby was charged with filing a false report and stating that a shooting had occurred when it clearly had not, according to the report. Owensby was taken into custody on Wednesday, September 22nd, after he was served with an active warrant for failure to appear out of Cott County General Sessions Court. 69-year-old Owensby was initially arrested in late August after Sheriff's Office served a search warrant in the residence in relation to two fatal attacks in Jimtown Road. Owensby was taken into custody um, with possession of marijuana, Schedule 6. An aggressive dog was also taken into custody. Investigators collected DNA from two other dogs that belonged to individuals in separate residence on the property. No information, no new information on these attacks has been released as the CCSO awaits forensic reports from the DNA samples. I truly, truly believe that they were trying to silence him. And the only way they could was possibly putting out a hit. The hit didn't work, so what else do we do? We put him in jail. Clearly stated he had seen a vehicle driving. The deputy on scene said we couldn't find any casings. It's not hard to pick up your casings. Or if you're using a revolver, there are going to be no casings. It makes no sense that he would call at 2.30 in the morning and say someone shot through his camper. It's, it's just, <laughs> it's insanity. <clears throat> There's no DNA results back open to the public. There's nothing. Which just leads me to believe that this cover-up was successful, I guess, so to say. I don't know. None of this, none of this rubs me the right way and none of it should rub you the right way either. I have a phone call put into both of the um, higher ranking officers at Cott County, Tennessee. I also put in a phone call to public relations and I have not gotten a response back yet. I have... <clears throat> Six questions that I'm going to ask. One, what is the listed cause of death for Tony Aarons? Same for Amber Miller. Was number two. Number three, what's the update on Charles Owensby? Number four, what if anything happened to the supposed dogs that attacked both Vicks? Five, why didn't the dogs that supposedly attacked Amber Miller attack the Good Samaritan? And number six, Charles Owensby 
Why such a push on him? Also, what became of the shots fired at his home? Which, I know what the news asked. I just wanted to hear what they were going to say. And I was going to bring up that the casings could be cleaned up. And they could be fired from a revolver. So, I will... As normal, stay on top of things because <clears throat> that's what I do. I stay on top of things because I want answers. I want answers and so should you. All right, guys, a lot of very true information right there. And I hope it does resonate with many of you who are interested in the same thing I am, uh, the research on these attacks. I do love encounters. I love encounters. I love hearing the experiences and such. But my main focus, my main uh, real passion for this channel is the research. Research of these experiences, um, these attacks and such. And, well, obviously the Tom Mezzik case. But... uh yeah, it's a lot of information that shows the government just doesn't care about us. Please, everyone, just when you do go in the woods, let someone know where you are, always, and always have some sort of protection with you. But main thing is let someone know where you're going, you know, please. All right, guys, with that being said, thank you once again for supporting the channel. Your support is what makes this channel continue to grow and go and what makes it a place for people to share their ideas, theories, and experiences. With that being said, everyone, stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant. Keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, and friends. These creatures are real. They are out there. They're dangerous share this information with the people you love and care about and it may just help save their lives someday until next time never stop asking questions never stop searching for the answers or the truth and god bless